All right, guys, they are, are already selling Blood Torva. The services to... Yo, the thank you, Jellyfish. Thank you. I'm trying, bro. Discussed in this video... We're trying every day. ...against Jagex Terms of Service. Selling or buying the services discussed will result in your... Services are banned, guys. You guys see what happened to Oda? Ugh. Oda said he's innocent still, though. You can react to that video as well. Your account getting permanently banned. Similarly, unauthorized clients or plugins are also against the rules and will also result in a permanent ban. Do not engage in any of these activities. Jagex recently released Desert Treasure 2, and with it, four brand new bosses to tackle. Now that is a cool intro, We've got man. Mardorvis, oh. the Duke, the Whisper, and the Leviathan. Oh, all less than level 800, guys. 800, by the way. Ma imagine they make the game, like, we keep just, uh, like, they keep adding updates to the point where we would be level 800, guys. You think uh, RuneScape would be like that 20 years down the line, or will we still be 126 comment? Or like 138 maybe, or uh, <laughs> maybe in 100 years, right guys? It would be level 800. Then these bosses would be nothing, bro. It would be like freaking... Maybe mid-game content, you know what I mean? <laughs> That'd be wild. All offering players a challenging fight for a chance to get some incredibly strong drops. But Jagex took it a step further. So much of this stuff, like that's... At least they dropped the Virtus, guys. Like, all this stuff, just like precursors, right, guys? What is all that stuff? Besides, I only know what the Virtus is, guys. It only took them 10 plus years to add Virtus back into the game. Props. But Jagex took it a step further and also added awakened versions of each of these bosses. These are essentially hard mode plus 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 variations intended to be inferno level difficulty encounters. In fact, they're so challenging that players are only tasked with defeating each one just a single time in order to get the reward. And what That's it? Is this reward, you might ask? A cosmetic kit that changes your normal newbie Torva armor into the Blood Torva set. At this moment, there's not many gamers who've managed to complete this challenge. This is, after all, intended to be the hardest PVM challenge in the game. You'll probably recognize names like Sink, Adikon, and Porkizard from this world first list. Essentially, anyone with Blood Torva right now is a 0.001% Grandmaster Chair PVMer. Not bad, not bad. Or so I thought. Literally just a few days after the release of Desert Treasure 2, I received a tip off that Blood Torva cosmetic kits were already being sold on the black market. Aw, oh, come on now. It's just cosmetic though, man. <laughs> Guys, would you pay for a cosmetic? No, 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 don't pay for it. It's against the rules. Don't do it. I'm saying. Yeah, never mind. Just scratch that. Forget I said that, guys. Don't pay for it. Because it's not against... It's not... It's not for the... It's not... It's against the rules, okay? I apologize. Now, before I get into what's happening here and how much these black market service providers are charging for Blood Torva, we need to talk about the Jagex Terms of Service. As it stands at the time of making- Yeah, don't pay for Blood Torva, guys. ...making this video, services fall into one of two buckets. Leech services, where the customer plays with boosters to get something like a com- Wait, will they- Will, will this fall into the bucket where it's kind of semi-allowed, bro? ...achievement speedrun time, or login services where someone is actually playing on your account for you, so something like the Infer- yeah, it, it would, it's login services. That's against the rules, man. No. Leech services are currently within the rules of the game, but login services... Yeah, only leech services. ...are definitely not. In fact, we've seen Jack expand players time and time again for these types of services. Another eight. <laughs> there's gonna be more, there's eight, they probably do like 80 in a day, these companies, bro. Imagine starting a company getting in-game items. Are you going to explain that to your tax when, when doing your taxes, guys? Yeah, I guess it's a new world, right? Well, that wouldn't be that hard. Historically, login services would mean providing someone with your account details and letting them log in to do the content for you. But that's evolved to remote services, where essentially a seller connects to your PC with an application like Parsec or TeamViewer and plays through that connection. This remote method makes it harder to detect since the customer's IP isn't actually changing. Bro, wouldn't there be like some input lag doing that though? This has emboldened a lot of sellers, which is why they're- Look at all those freaking t marked tiles, bro. 
I need I need I need to make sure what's uh what I'm doing here with when I do the inferno guys. There are now I gotta mark all those tiles. Dozens, if not hundreds of providers are offering to complete content like the Inferno for the right price. Again, I want to reiterate that this is against the rules, despite what a seller might tell you. Now that you understand how this is happening, let's jump back to Blood Torva. I was absolutely expecting that this would become a black market service, but I was shocked at how fast it came to market. Initially, I thought, well, maybe these are just scammers pretending to sell Blood Torva in order to scam customers. And while I'm sure there's plenty of those too, the screenshots that I was sent were from one of the most well-known sellers of black market services. Sad, bro. Don't do this, guys. And after I looked into it, I can confirm Blood Torva is in fact 2.3 bill. Oh my god! It's already being sold on the black market, and for prices up, guys, they're charging like 200 mil or like 500 mil for a, a 500 TOA raid to to leech, guys. And now this words of for just one one boss kill, one bill. Oh my god! Max cash for clears of all four. Look at them adding their emojis to the, the ticket uh, channel as well, man. What a vampire of all things. Or awakened boss. I guess for the blood torva, but... But there was something else that I found very interesting. The people selling these might not be true grandmasters like Addy Connor Mulgoat Kirby like you see on screen now, but rather just people with access to the right cheat client plugins. This is a screenshot that I was sent of someone using an auto prayer switcher for Leviathan. I suspect that a lot of black market sellers are leveraging similar plugins, meaning that the customers who purchase kits are not only risking everything by trusting the seller to play on their account, but also potentially risking a- Guys, is this the Awakened version? What am I, what am I watching, guys? I've never seen this. This must be from the quest. Although Jagex has remained fairly quiet on the subject of whether they'll ban Blood Torva kit sellers and buyers, I have heard that the person in the screenshot using cheat plugins has been permanently banned. Taking out the game. Banned. You know, for something like Infernal Capes, I guess buyers are at least paying for a best-in-slot item that's going to provide them with some utility in-game, but for a Blood Torva kit that's purely a cosmetic, people are literally paying above max cash just to lie to everyone else about how good they are at PVM. That's pretty sad if you ask me. I know, man. And they're using their, like, team viewer clients and stuff. Sad, bro, sad. And as is always... It totally devalues the high scores if there is a high scores. Gonna be high scores for this, probably not. It's the case. They have no point to do the awakened all day unless they want high scores, I guess. Case, this is just going to get worse, and it will probably devolve into a high number of the Blood Torva kits that you see in game having been purchased on the black market. That really bums me out because it makes having prestige items in the game effectively meaningless. And while it's certainly in human nature to cheat to that get Zaya? ahead, this oh, it's like the Desert Treasure 2 area, bro. It's a ghost town. This is why we can't have nice things. Hopefully Jagex will have issued some sort of statement by the time this video releases, but whether or not they'll be taking any action against Blood Torva sales, that remains to be Old footage back when Mod Matt K was working there. Seen. Consider leaving a like- Man, you, you organize some good events though, man. And subscribing if you made it this far, and I- Guys, let's uh, read some comments here. Must feel very weird flexing a cosmetically paid bills for. Everyone- Ooh, Captain Falcon. Everyone's buying Inferno Case and Jagex is doing nothing. I know, right? They're not really doing nothing about that. I'm pretty clueless on new content. I've played for a while, though. Thanks for the info. Alright, guys. That's the video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next one. Now check out Zorte in the description. Like, comment, subscribe. Do all these live streams on Twitch. Please consider, um, becoming a member. I mean, uh, becoming a subscriber, man. I don't make any money currently. Currently bad ban on the main YouTube channel, and I'll see you guys next one. Later.